Foundation Course Kabbalah Part 1 Lesson 10 Rabbi Mikhail Ben Pesach Portnar This lesson took place at the beginning of December 2004, and at that time of that year, for the Jews, it was the time where they celebrated the feast Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the feast wherein the Jewish people, during eight days, let burn the light. I'm going to tell you about the history and the spiritual background. About 165 BC, the Hellenists came to the east. The rulers of that time were having a Greek background, but there were also influences of the Syrian people because they had captured Israel also. Of course, the people of Israel were revolting, but a special family who claimed the victory did the most. Be aware that we aren't talking about the personal human experiences, but mainly about the strengths that were working in these days. What was the reason of this all? Not the event is important, it is all about the strengths that were active during this time. Whatever happened with Israel had to happen. The strengths, it had to be happen here on earth. You have to know all the strengths. The spiritual strengths had to come one day upon the earth. Why? The earth does need them, and all the strengths have been descended. No apocalypse will come, but be aware what the higher doesn't see as an uh, apocalypse doesn't mean we won't experience it as a disaster. But what is written in the book about the apocalypse, this won't happen. All the strengths the earth does need are here. Of course, a hotbed will be there, but the higher strengths are ready. The event in Israel in the year 1000. 165 BC had to happen. The history isn't important, it, it isn't relevant, but no, it had to happen. The Feast of Hanukkah is the symbol of the recapture of the temple, and one family of priests had done this, and afterwards they cleaned the temple. All the occupations, what they had done and left behind, it had to be cleared. Most of you are known with the candle that have place for seven candles. It is named the menorah, and during that time they needed oil for to light the candles and to let them burn. Behold, everything is spiritual. There was no oil because it had to be very special. It's a very special oil, and the story tells us there was only one bottle of this special oil left, enough for one candle to burn. Always must be there an agreement between the spiritual and the physical. What was it all about? The world was in spiritual darkness. It was the moment of the Hellenistic world, and this world was focused on culture, art, and they made a lot of statues. People were focused on their body, bodybuilding, etc. Of course, this time had brought a lot of good things, but the problem was that they had forgotten the spiritual world. Only the outer was important. The highest adagio of the Greek was the standard of beauty. It is written in the Old Testament, the second son would bring beauty. And indeed, the generation of David had brought the Western world a lot of beautiful things. For example, art and culture, and the third son, Shem. He hold tight at the spiritual strengths. It was the time of the blossoming of beauty, but without Shem, it stays outer beauty only. This is what we're talking about. This is the law of the strengths. It was forbidden for a Jew to keep himself busy with art, culture, etc. Why? When doing so, one has the chance to make descriptions from within, a description between him and the inner strength, and this is idolization. My, by making descriptions, one has the chance to pollute the covenant we have made with the source. In a physical way, it isn't important anymore. It is all about the Jewish people, about the altruistic wishes. The Greek dominated Israel, meaning the people of Israel couldn't work any longer in a spiritual way on themselves. It was the spiritual work that was oppressed. The outer, the egoistic wishes were far more important and not the condition of the soul. When we talk about the Greek, be aware we don't speak about the outer Greek, but about the outer condition within me. 
But the Jewish people kept their selves busy with the outer, with culture and art, etc. But once one is involved in this, one can't fulfill his goal, and as a result, one falls into darkness. The Feast of Hanukkah is therefore the feast that one commemorates men partial is lightened. One that moment something came from above, spiritual strength descended on earth. Nothing disappears in the spiritual. There's a law showing us there is no disappearance in the spiritual. It is the universal law. Everything will be anchored for eternity. Every soul descending here on earth will never be lost. Even what you just have read will be there forever. There are eight lights. A servant lights the candles. One is higher than the other. One has to light the other. The servant who lights the candles, he serves others. He makes himself small, and only by way of this making smaller, he can serve others. The first evening is the light of Shamash, the light of Chokmah. This is the seed of the light coming to earth, the smallest fira, Malchut. Everything has to be corrected, and the way of corrections is from the finest to the rougher. First we correct our little wishes, and afterwards the rougher wishes. One need more light for the rougher wishes. We need the light for it to come through. You can compare this with a swelling. When the swelling is small and we need little medicine, but when the swelling becomes greater and greater, we are in need of something heavier. Chemotherapy, for example. And there is another comparison. Suppose one never drinks. He only drinks one glass. It is enough for him, but for someone who is a regular drinker, he wants to drink more glasses. In everything we can see the way from the weakest to the strongest. Women caused the light were diminished. We don't talk about the physical women. We only talk about strengths. The female strengths are the egoistic wishes. Consider we need them, both male and female. The woman lights the first candle of Chochmah to the Malchut, and the next day she lights Yesod. Then two candles are burning. In this way we work from the light... In this way, we work from the left to the right. The light is lit, and we are going to experience. All the lights will be burning till we have reached the eight, the eight days, the last candle. All the light comes from Chokmah, and Chokmah means wisdom. We have ten sferot. Everything is ten. In the singular light of the Creator are ten flavors. Ketar, Bina, etc., are variations of the light. The further we come downstairs, the rougher it becomes. The lowest seven sefirot are rougher, and the roughest is Malchut. A part of Bina is downstairs also. Bina has divided herself. Her higher part lives next to Chokmah, so there is always light. This is the human being who has in himself as well the male part as the female part. When a man thinks he has only the masculine in him, he can't carry any fruits. It is the same during the Second World War. Machos are ruining everything. They can only ruin. We need both, as well, the male and the female. Although there is a difference, the male part within a woman is female, and the female part within a man is masculine. Everything is qualitative, but you have both within you. One third of the higher strength stays in Hokma. From Hokma we receive the light. How comes the light to us? There has to be a merging as well in the physical as spiritual. The light has to penetrate you, a merging with the light, a bumping merging, zivug de haka. Then the light can enter. It is the same in our world. A man makes the proposal, the woman says no, but he keeps trying, and at the end she says yes. It is the same in the spiritual. One third of Bina is above, two third of Bina descends to below, to her children. The products of Chokmah and Bina have the qualities of their children. It is the same in our world. Look at a woman who is playing with her child. It is easy for a woman to do so. It is the Bina who is descending. Keter, Chokmah, and Bina are the altruistic wishes, and under these wishes we see the egoistic wishes, the wish to receive. Keter, Chokmah, and Bina. They don't have the need for to receive, but everything what is under the Keter, 
Chokhmah and Bina, there is the need for the receiving. They are the product of Malchut. They want to receive. The three first strengths are the strengths of the giving. Then slowly the strength diminished. Keter wants to give for 100%. Chokhmah for 99%. And with Bina, we see the beginning of the strength of the limitation. Chokhmah is a little bit rougher, although very thin. But with Bina, we have already the feeling of resistance. Sometimes Bina can come to below for to help the lower to come to the light. See the similarity with our world. First, there was darkness. The time of the Hellenist was a time of spiritual darkness for people. A great part of the Jewish people forgot the Torah. They to build fitness centers, they too only thought about the physical body. There was only interest for the physical body, and less and lesser they went to the temple, that's why it became a time of darkness. Don't think the Greek were bad people. Remember, all misery is due to and for the sake of. There are always two parts in the spiritual, and both can be in harmony. The contradiction is only here on earth, but in the spiritual there is harmony only. All misery was due to the Jews and all miseries for the sake of the Jews. Can you see how splendid this is? When the Jews should have fulfilled their task, they wouldn't have been of any interest for the Greek. If the Jew had spent his time at the Torah, and not otherwise, by spending his time at bodybuilding, etc., the Greek would have received the light. But when a Jew neglects his work and his only interest in his physical body, the Greek can't receive the light. The service of the temple is divided in three levels. First, we have the priests, then the Levite, and then the third level, Israel. This is the way in which the light comes to below. It comes from above to below. We can see this in the ten sifrat. The human being is as the ten sifrat. The three upper are the spiritual Jews. Keter, the priests, Chokhmah, Levite and Bina, Israel. What rests are the seven sifrot. Every sfira has ten sifrot. Seven times ten is seventy. Seventy roots of the nations here on earth. Seventy roots, and beside these seventy nations, we see a lot of sub-nations. It is the task of the Jew to pass on. When they neglect their task, then misery and suffering is the consequence. Of course, it isn't only a problem of the Jews, it has also to do with the progression of the nations. Don't think the Jew has a privileged position, because they are in a higher spiritual level. They have to do this work. It is the law. See the Jew as the head and the nations as the body. Is there any advantage? What is a body without a head, and what is a head without a body? A Jew only can come to his fulfillment his fulfillment once the nations have come to their fulfillment too. Why? When only the head comes to his fulfillment, then the three sifrat are standing very close to the Creator. It looks marvelous, but it is only three sifrat. Only when all ten sifrat are with the Creator, we have fulfillment, as well for the Jew as for others. As a nation, we are one. In the spirituality, there is only oneness. Everything comes from one soul. The ten sferot, the first three, the Jew, each one of us has these ten sferot, regardless your origin. When you use the world when you use the word Israel, we don't speak about the land Israel. The meaning of the word Israel is going directly to the Creator. It is an attribute most close to the Creator. This is what we mean when we are speaking about Israel and nothing else. Each human, each human being has these two strengths, the strength of Israel and the strength of the nations of the world. The children of Bina, or in other words, our egoistic wishes. Of course, every nation is unique and together we form a kaleidoscope from the Creator. The candle we first light is the Malchut. This is the smallest one, and then we light the next one. The brightest is Chokmah, because everything is coming from Chokmah. It is very important to learn to distinguish what is the perspective you are talking about. Do we speak about the way from above to below, or do we speak about the way from below to above? 
Try to distinguish this. Otherwise, there is no understanding at all of the Torah. The right side of the table in the text. Kelim, the wishes. Light from below first comes in Malchut, and from there to Yesod, Chod, etc. The left side of the table. Lights. First Malchut, the smallest light, goes to Yesod, and Chod till the Keter. We start with the easiest one. The Kli is the receiver, and within the Malchut we have the most roughest and toughest wishes. The light is coming from above. First it enters the Keter, then Chokmah, Bina, etc. The first light is the smallest light. It is it is the light of Malchut, because light, too, has to be divided. The light has diminished her strength. First, we have to learn how to handle the light, to enjoy the light. Afterwards, we can receive more and more. The Sfera Malchut is the first one who will be filled, as the first one means the lowest light. Keter is upstairs, and he is the last entering our consciousness. First, the Malchut, the lowest light, and from here, we can go further to above, to the brighter light. See the eight Sfirot as your inner space. The light enters first the Malchut. It is a small light, and we can come to the experience of the small light. Malchut are the wishes, the roughest wishes. This small light is enough to make the Malchut transparent, to light her. Once all the lights are here, below, then everything will come to its right place. The light is coming from above to below. See your Malchut as awareness compartment. Malchut lights or lights the Yesod, and the light enters the Yesod. We have to start from below, otherwise the light can't reach their own place. We always begin from the left to right, from the Malchut to the Yesod, from Yesod to Hod, and from Hod to Netzach, etc. Come to the understanding there is only the now. Never think about the things happened in the past. First, the Greek conquered Israel, and then came the Romans. But we aren't talking about people. It's all about the victory in myself. The victory of the evil in myself. This is the victory we are talking about. Not the Greek or Roman is the enemy. I have only one enemy, my evil. Of course, the events of the past, it is our history, but... It is not our real enemy. You have to change your evil into the good. What is evil? Evil is only temporarily shortness. It is a shortness of the correction for to see the good behind the evil. The more you correct yourself, the more good you see. Our first correction is an easy correction, and then the corrections become heavier. In the Malchut, we absolutely don't see the creating strength. In this part, we are completely separated from the holiness. Only in this separation of the holiness, we can see that none of us is capable to save oneself. And from this point, this deepest point within ourself, from the deepest disappointments, we see there is no chance at all to come to the light. From within there has to be the deepest cry, only then the light comes. We are all equal, and the Creator wishes that we, as an equal partner, long for Him. It is the Creator who created everything, and it is up to Him to let Him in. It is up to me to let Him in. But we don't have the conformity with the light yet, although religions tell us otherwise. I have to come to the experience. I have to feel the desire, and the desire for the light has to be so tremendous so now I can approach him in equality. Love has many ways, a lot of qualities. I love my child, but I send him away. I don't say, stay with me. I have to let him go so now he can become independent, too. We have to develop an independent love. It is the same in our relation with the Creator. We are dwelling from the light, but it was his wish. So now we can come to the independent love for the Creator, to go the way up as equal partners. Everything is predestined. It is our choice what we do. 
Do we choose for the good or for the evil? This is the human being. He is in the left or in the right. He is with the light or he is in darkness. We need both. Before we react, we have to choose. And through choosing, we will be rewarded. You can only experience more light when you go higher and higher, and your experience has to be in the now and not in the hereafter. People were kept stupid, and this too was necessarily. Just as a mother who says to her child, eat so later you will be strong as your mom or daddy. This is the way for to come to the real experience of the light. We are not interested in traditions, but you have to know the spiritual processes that are involved. Place and replace everything in the now, not in the past. Experience the now. You have to feel each experience in the now. Only this moment is real. Only this way you can come in contact with the spiritual. When the Creator doesn't give a thing to a person yet, who am I to say which instruction he has to follow, or to say what he's doing wrong? Never do this. Never patronize, because it is you who don't receive the light. Make yourself small, humble, whatever your religion may be. Each one of us thinks his religion is the best, but despite his religion, he has to come in a personal way to the experience of the light. Each of us has to make himself transparent, open for the light, for to enjoy the Creator, to enjoy the eternal life. Not in the hereafter, but in this life. Only when we live in the now we can experience the good and the evil. Experience the strengths in the now brings forth the right reaction. Only in the now you can experience. When we talk about day and night, we mean the day is as light and night is as darkness. Go to sleep as early as you can. Let me tell you a story. It is about the time of the communism in Russia. When one wanted to join the party, there were some questions. Will you stop drinking? Yes, of course. I only drink when I attend the party. Will you stop smoking? Yes, of course. I only smoke when I attend the party. Will you stop looking at women? Yes, of course. No more women for me. Finally, the last question. Will you give up your life for the country? Of course. What has been left of my life? We do have to know what we are doing. Stop doing things that are withholding you from your great goal. Early in the morning, the light raises. His sed is rising, mercy, and shines the whole day. After dawn, Gura comes, the female aspect and limitation. During and in the evening, the light is limited through the female aspect. Gura this is a principle, and principles are there for each one of us, wherever you may live on this earth. When it is daytime for you, Chesed is present, and when it is nighttime for you, the Gevura is present. It is simple, and around midnight, at 12 o'clock, there is a special strength. It is the strength of kindness. This is a very special moment. See it this way. When you keep yourself busy at this moment in a very conscious way and ask the Creator, you accelerate your process because during this moment you receive your kilim. When you pray at night, you receive a little light in the form of a kli. Kli is an awareness organ. And when the light rises and the light of his set enters, you already have a vessel for it to receive the light. It is that easy. His head shines the whole day. And when I have a place for to receive the light, I have made myself open, transparent. And the time of midnight is the best moment for to make myself transparent, susceptible. When it becomes morning, you already have a place for the light to enter, the light of his head, mercy. When we pray in the evening, we are making kilim for the daytime. Be aware, behind every tradition there is the creating strength. It isn't about the tradition. Tradition in itself doesn't mean a thing. It is all about the strength within the tradition that purifies. What will be purified? We will be purified from all our egoistic wishes. Let me give you an example from this world. 
First, there is crude oil. Crude oil doesn't burn so well. The oil has to be refined, so the oil will burn well. The refiner, the oil, the better the burn, the better the burning. It is the same with us. The more we are purified, the more light can enter within us. We need a place for to receive the light. We have to set free an inner place for to receive the light. It is all concerning inner strength. The true man is he who opened himself, set himself free from the endless light, Ain Sof. Set himself free for the endless light, Ain Sof. Make yourself small from within, then you will receive from the higher. This is your personal work. No one else can do this for you. Let me give you an outline. I explain it to you once again so you will come to the right understanding. First, there is Ein Sof, the endless light. This light is covered with all kinds of forms, the ten Sfirot. Then we have the inner being. Then the area of the good and evil, the true good and evil within me. Finally, the outer being, meaning this outer wishes, for instance, wishes as eating, drinking, and sex. And around these forms we see the Creator in his quality named nature. We are looking from within to above. The Ain Self is upstairs, and within the inner being, then we have the level of the good and evil, and the outer being. Question. When was the act of creation? Adam was made on the sixth day. All these forms were within Adam. See drawing. We are speaking from our awareness. Adam was born from within the Creator, the Lord. He only felt the inner being. There were no other feelings. This is what we mean when we speak about Adam. He only experienced his inner part. He was aware of the wishes from his head to his waist. Further, he had no feeling. He wasn't aware of the strengths beneath his waist. Of course, there was Chava, Eve, and they were naked. But don't think about a man and a woman. Naked means they didn't feel shame. They hadn't entered the area of the good and evil. What he did was with his inner. And this what we call paradise or the Garden of Eden. It is the area of the inner being. This area and the area of the good and evil are within every human being. These are our inner layers. It is the path of our experience the experience of the inner and the area of the good and evil. This is what we experience and this is also the subject of our study. The subject of our study is the inner being and the area of the good and evil. We have no interest for the outer being. No interest in whatever religion or culture or whatever your background may be. In our study, we begin with the good and evil. Of course, the outer, of course, the outer being will be corrected, but our preference lies in the inner. Kabbalah is about your inner. Adam only felt his inner part. In a way, he was the most perfect, kind-hearted man. There was no separation between the inner and the area of the good and evil. His awareness was partly in the area of the good and evil. Uh, this is the part we name the source of life. It is our tree of life, and every human being has this tree of life within him. The inner being reaches halfway the area of the good and evil. Remember, good and evil, everything is qualitative. The closer you near the inner, the more good. And the closer you come to the outer, the more evil. And halfway we see the tree of life. And this is the object of the Torah he's speaking about. All these layers are within our inner. From the area of the good and evil... The tree of knowledge is the tree of good and evil. From this point, we become aware of the sin present in every human being. What is sin? Adam was a kind-hearted man, the inner being and the paradise. Adam worked in the Garden of Eden. When we say worked, it doesn't think he was working physically with spade and rake. He was gardening within his inner. He took away all the thorns, the weed. He turned the soil over so the rose could blossom. This was the work he did in the paradise because Ein Sof ordered him. It was the wish of the Creator that there would be 
three ascendings, three ascendings of the light. The first ascending was on Shabbat, meaning the bringing in of the high light. Then the second ascending and the third ascending of the light. But Adam couldn't wait for the third light. He already wanted to receive before the light was coming to him, before he had brought in the light within him. If he had done so, he should have experienced from within the inner being till his outer being, and there wouldn't have been any evil in the world. Adam already, Adam already had purified the half of the area of the good and evil from within, and we are doing it from the outside. Adam had purified the half of the area from within, and that's why he felt himself a superman. The light gave him so much power, he felt as a superman, and therefore he thought by himself, I can do the rest on my own. He felt so strong, he didn't wait for the light. The third ascending from the Creator. He thought he could achieve the light from the other side also. So strong he felt. He thought he could penetrate the world of the good and evil by way of himself. And once we're thinking we can do something on our own, we see the snake. What is the snake? What are the powers of the snake? They are the forces of the outer being. The snake settles himself just halfway the area of the good and evil, the earthly egoistic wishes. In the beginning there was no snake. Adam had purified the paradise. His purifying reached almost to the area of the outer being, and here he felt experience the snake, the powers of the outer being, and these powers were stimulating him. This was something new for him. He didn't felt this before, so the separation with the outer being became smaller. Now the outer wishes could reach him. Let me tell you a story about how I learned in Israel the Torah. I was a man of forty and was sitting between small boys, boys of very young age, and with them I learned the Torah. All these boys so innocent. I looked at these boys and saw they were just as Adam. They didn't felt the outer being. And I was wondering, what is their fulfillment? Of course, one can come to his fulfillment, but later, when they are growing up and married, then they have taste the outer being. All the outer wishes will come to them. One can be a saint, but just when one is a saint, the seduction will be very powerful. Why? Because there is no opposite for to resist all these seductions. One has to taste just as Adam. It isn't wrong to use your wishes. You have to experience everything, but it is all about what you are doing with your wishes. And that is only up to you. In yourself you have all the wishes, and this isn't wrong. Each one of us has to become his own ruler. The more strength you build up, the stronger you will become. Adam entered the outer area from within, but he couldn't resist the temptation. In this way, the Creator had created us. It is His wish to seduce us, so now we can build up strength. Adam felt the snake. He felt the snake stimulating him. Why are you so divine? Come have dinner with me. Taste from the pleasure you can experience here with me. When Adam was so strong, he wasn't allowed to go there. But now, when he felt strong, first he experienced the strength of Ain Sof, but not the strength of the outer. And this too had to experience. But in the beginning, there was no temptation. He was still in the area of the absolute good, but it wasn't his own will. The Creator told him not to go further. Adam wasn't ready for it to penetrate the third light. So the Creator said to him, wait for me, then we can enjoy it forever. But Adam thought, I continued together with Chava, Eve, and didn't realize it wasn't the right time and the right place. And through this, he broke his consciousness in little pieces. Question. <clears throat> Suppose you see a huge amount of money, let's say 20 million pounds. What do you do? Can you withstand it? Can you withstand the temptation? Suppose you win the lottery. What are your plans? You're going to do this and that, and the consequence you don't think on, on the Creator at all. When you feel so happy, you break the spiritual powers you have once built up. 
You only think about what can I do with all this money. There is no time left for you to keep, to keep you busy with the inner. You know, then you are very to deplore. You are losing yourself because of all that money. And it was the same for Adam. Adam saw he could experience. He saw the temptation, the 20 million, in the same way we see in the same way we see the temptation. Oh yes, he thought of the Creator, but his strength was gone. When you do the same, you will be broken too. You are destroying yourself. You have to know it is very difficult to live in the real spirituality. It is difficult to live in the now. No one knows what the now really is. So how can we long for something we don't know? The Creator manifests Himself only in the now, but we are destroyed by the past and the future images. For instance, suppose you are dying. Just before someone dies, he feels relieved. All the plans, all the physical matters, they are gone. This is such a relief. There is no physical anymore. There is no more itching. When this is happening, you come to the inner. There are no plans anymore, and you step in the death of the physical robe. The physical doesn't bother you anymore. You will be left at peace, and this is the point to see the eternal moment. No new plans, no pain, no nothing. I suggest don't wait for your death, but live every minute if it was the last. Try to live it if it is the last moment of your life. Only then you can get a feeling of the now moment. When you only think at the last moment, is there a thought about the future? No loneliness in this last moment. No more sin. Only living absolutely. In this moment you feel your breath. You can follow your heart. Try to live if it is the last moment of your life. Only in the now can you feel alive. You have to fight every day and day. Fight for yourself, for the goal of creation, considering yourself. Good luck. Please refer to the written material, the first drawing, Hanukkah lights, ten sfirot are ten lights. And please refer to the second drawing, which is the birth of Adam and the fall of sin.